Well, Suzanne, I don't know if she can do it. It is a very delicate tightrope. So I'm going to lay my cards here out on the table and tell you how I formed my conclusion. There have been two major reading subjects that I have tackled in the last nine months on the nonfiction front. The first is Israel and Palestine. I've read about maybe 20 books on the subject, both sides. My conclusion formed from all this reading, formed from looking at the events through that history, is that Israel is in the wrong and that this devastation on the Palestinian people needs to fucking stop as well as this diabolical financial relationship, as well as APAC. What APAC did to Jamal Bowman, to the Oregon progressives, is fucking despicable. But then we open door number two of my reading history, and that has been, of course, the Weimar Republic, the rise of an Austrian fascist, the complete disruption of everything that was good about Germany in the 1920s up through 1932. The Weimar Republic had a lot of promise, and it is absolutely sad to me that that had to go away because of a megalomaniac. If you think that that cannot happen in the United States, think again, because the more you dive into it, and I've documented this on my other account, the more you see the clear parallels between Trump and that Austrian madman. Which brings us back to the first subject. What is the best way for us to divest ourselves from this deeply insalubrious relationship with Israel? Definitely not Joe Biden, but Kamala is slightly better. And if we want to have any hope of reform from within the Democratic Party, we have to restore our Democratic Republic. And the other problem I have is that when the third party types come in here, they don't actually have a fucking plan. And I say this as a leftist and a progressive. I'm being completely pragmatic here. Within the limited range of options, electing Kamala to president is our best chance of, number one, stopping Trump and thus stopping Project 2025 and authoritarianism, and number two, the minute that she is in office, fighting her on day one from the left, which is my plan. That is my plan as a progressive. I am all in the tank for Kamala because I am a patriot and I want to preserve this country. But I'm also deeply worried about the Israel situation and the bombardment of all this bloodshed and cruelty and death upon starving children in the Gaza Strip. I also am deeply pissed off at the way that even Joe Biden has called the brave, peaceful protesters on campus violent when they have not been that when the violence has come from the police. So this is a difficult position that I've arrived at, but that to me is the only pragmatic way with which to preserve democracy and also reevaluate what our relationship to Israel is. And kudos, by the way, to the group of 300 uh, Jewish people who today went into Congress and protested Netanyahu speaking. All right, this is not going away. The resistance against Israel, Israel's imperialism is not going away. But we have to be smart about the best way to fight it. And if people want to unfollow me over this, fine, fuck them. If people want to declare me, oh, you're not really a leftist, Fuck them. In your eyes, maybe not. But I have a very clear strategic and logistical idea of how to tackle two 
extremely thorny problems. And that's how I feel. 